Christian County Library, and today I thought I'd talk to you a little bit about the census. The 1950 census will be released on April the 1st of this year, and to celebrate, I thought I'd give you a quick lesson on how to use census records for your genealogical research. But first, let's talk a little bit about the 1950 census. The census has been taken every 10 years since 1790 and is actually written into the United States Constitution. The census date varies, but each census is released to the public after 72 years. That gives any time for any privacy issues to go away, so you're not exactly giving out current addresses or current information, so you don't have to worry about anyone hunting you down that way. When the census is first released, it'll only be available online through the National Archives website, which I'm on right now. But other sites, such as Ancestry and Family Search, should get them up on their sites fairly quickly. Now, for the most part, it's not real fun searching through newly released census records um, since they're not indexed and they're not searchable yet. But thankfully, in the 1940 census that was released 10 years ago kind of gave us a good reference for how long it should take to get those records indexed. Um, their goal in 2012 was to have their all the records indexed by six months after they're released, but they actually got it done in four. So we know that it'll probably take four to six months to get those indexed and where we can search through them easily. Um, over the years, census questions have changed a little bit. They mostly have the same information, such as place of residence, name, age, occupation, and marital status. But different censuses give a little bit more details and kind of change over the years. Today, I'm going to take you through how to find your ancestor on census records and hopefully hopefully familiarize you with how to use them and what's on them. So to do that, I'm actually going to go to Ancestry using the library's website. So I'm going to go to Christian County Library and I'm going to go to the research tab. And then I'm going to scroll down until I find Ancestry. Should be up here near the top because they're on in alphabetical order. So here we go. Now you have to be at the library to use Ancestry Library Edition, but if you're not at the library, you can use FamilySearch.org, which is a free website, and all you have to do is make a free account, and you can view those anytime. So to view the census records, you can just scroll down here to search the census, and then click search now. And what we're going to want to do when we're looking for the census records, is there a good way to give you a snapshot of um, where what your ancestors like lo life looked like every 10 years roughly so it kind of tells you just the basic information about them and it helps you to build like a skeleton of their life so every 10 years you know where they're at you know how old they were you know how who they were living with you can use that information to help you find other information and records later in your research so to show you that um Today we're going to be using my third great grandfather, William Claire Taylor, as an example, because he's a really good one for it. And what we're going to want to do is we want to start with the newest census records. You always want to start closest to you and work your way back, because you're most likely to know the information closer to you than you are about when your ancestor was a child. And if you start from further back, you make room for lots of errors there. So I'm going to give you just some quick information about him. He was born in 1876 in Missouri. He died in 1944 in Dade County, Missouri. He lived most of his life in Dade County. He married Clara M. Bruce, and his father died when he was young, and his mother remarried a man with the last name of Clompton. Now, not everyone's going to have this much information about their ancestor, and that's okay. The more information you have, though, the easier it gets to hunt down those census records. So, like I said, you want to start with the newest one. So we're going to start with the 1940. Now, of course, when the 1950s released, I won't be able to find him on it because he died before it was taken. But right now, the 1940 is the most up-to-date for him. So what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down here, and we want to actually select that we want to search in the 1940 federal census. That way we don't have to filter through all the other censuses in our search results. So all I'm going to do here is I'm just going to type in his full name. Ancestry is really good about um, if they just go by initials or they leave out a name or it's a different spelling. They kind of take that into account and give you options for how they might be received on the census because they're not always accurate with spellings or names and they can be completely off sometimes. 
So we're going to put in that he was born in 1876. And we're just going to put Missouri. We're not going to get specific with any counties because um, those can vary census to census due to whoever's giving the information and memories and all that. So it's usually best to just do it by the state if you know the state. And then um, we also want to put that he lived in Dade County because we know that's where he lived most of his life. If we can't find him in Dade County, we can expand it to just searching in Missouri. But for now, I'm going to search Dade County just because I figure it'll probably be a little bit quicker to find him. So we just put in that information and hit search. So here we have a list of people and it's going to put the search results that match your person or the information you gave it the most up top and then kind of filter down stuff that's maybe you should check if you're not finding the right person. Now here we have a Claire Taylor married to a Claire um, living in Dadeville, Dade County, Missouri, born about 1876. Now most people would be like, well maybe it's someone below because that's William C. Taylor. But Claire was actually his middle name, so we know we might want to check this record out. And so if we hover over view record, we can see this indexed information here, and we can see he was 64, he was male. Um, we can see that he owned a barber shop, and we can see just like basic information about him. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this. So most of the time you're going to find your ancestor labeled with like initials. So like you might find them as W.C. Taylor or you'll find it by middle names. Sometimes you'll find it by a name that has no relation and it's just what they went by. Um, now I know for a fact that he went by Claire most of his life, which is fun because his wife's name was Clara. Um, but so this is him. And we can also see down here that it has Claire Taylor as his wife. We can see that he owned a barber shop and all that. So all these details match up with the person that I know. So here you can record this information here, like write it down on a piece of paper, or you can print it, or you can also send the document home. And what this does is you click on it, you enter in your email twice, and it'll send you a copy where you don't have to be at the library to access that record. So that's really nice. So what I want to do is I'm going to click on the census record here. And that'll blow up the picture real big for us. And it actually highlights the family that we're looking at. So up here, this is mainly what censuses are going to look like. Like I said, they vary a little bit from year to year. Um, but they're mostly going to be in the same format. If you get to the older ones, they have severely fewer questions that are a little bit different. But for the most part, they look like this. Um, they'll have your state, your county. Um, if, you're, if they're living in the city, it'll have that. It'll have their township. And then it has who the census was enumerated by and on what date. Um, so this one was on the 17th of April, 1940. Um, and then down here, it lists all the questions that they're going to ask. So sometimes on the older censuses, it's kind of hard to read the questions. Now, of course, you can zoom in on them real big. And these are pretty easy to read. But if you can't ever read them or it, it gets kind of hard flipping going from the top down to the bottom and stuff, you can always print off um, a census worksheet, which is basically, it's a census form that's blank, and it just has room to put your family on it, and it has all of the categories typed out nice and neat, so it's easier to read and easier to look back at. Um, to find stuff like that, all you got to do is um, type into Google, just blank census form and then whatever you're, you're looking for and they'll come up pretty quick. So I like to use those occasionally, but I'm kind of used to just reading these, so that's usually what I go for. Also on Ancestry, if you hover over the section, it actually tells you what it is. Not all websites that you view them on will tell you what that section's for, but Ancestry is really awesome about doing that. So this also says that the respondent that tech Claire Taylor was the respondent. So how they know that is this little X here. The respondents will have a little X by their name. Uh, 1940 is really good about having it on just about all of them. As you get back to later years, sometimes they have it, sometimes they don't. It kind of depends on the census taker and how they were trained. Um, but it's really great. 
when you see that because you can see who answered the questions and kind of evaluate from there how accurate you think that census information is. So here I'm just going to show you real quick kind of what is on the 1940 census. So it has um, the number of household and order of visitation. So basically it's they're going down the street what order did they visit these houses in, whether their home was rented or owned, their home value, um, whether they're a farm or not, which they weren't, their name, of course, and down below, so the first name is going to be the head of household. It's typically the oldest male. And then down below, it has all the others living in the household. And over here, it'll say if they're the head of household and then the other people in the household, it tells you about um, the relationship to the head of the household. So Claire down here is Claire's wife. And then Teresa Bennett is Claire Taylor's grandson. And then we have a code, which is just for the census taker. And then we have whether they're male or female down here, their race, their age, which I find can be a little bit different. You might give it a year or two uh, leeway because it can change from census to census. Census takers weren't always that um, great about getting exact details and people didn't always give exact details. They didn't necessarily have to. A lot of people lied about their age on it. Um, so look out for those discrepancies when you're looking at other documents in the future. Um, it has their marital status, whether they're married or single or widowed, whether they attended school. Um, for here, for both Claire and his wife, it says no. And then for Teresa, it says yes. The highest grade they completed has their birthplace, which again, it can change depending on the census taker. Sometimes they get kind of lazy and just put all of the household in the same state that they were born in, but that's not true. Um, and then over here we have um, whether they're citizens of the United States. And then we have where they were living in 1935. So this is a really great question that's not asked on a lot of the censuses. Um, I believe it's only 1940, maybe 1930 as well. Um, but it asks where they were living five years ago. So that can add a little, another little bookmark to um, their life as far as where they were living. So here it says they were living in the same house. But like down here you see this other family, it says they were living in Springfield at the time. So that's really cool. So it has also has the county and state they were living in at that um, previous five years. It has, again, whether they are a resident on a farm. It has whether they are doing private work, public work, or seeking work. If they have a job. Um, basically, just what kind of work they were doing. Um, the hours they normally work. And their occupation. So here we can see for Claire Taylor, he was... A barbershop proprietor. And then it has the worker class, which you can look up. They actually have, you can Google um, the different codes here. Of course, Ancestry fills it in for you, but not all the other sites do. But this just means they're working on their own account, which means he owns the barbershop. The weeks worked in 1939, so that's a good reference for how many weeks he usually works out of the year. Um, his income, it says zero. I'm assuming that was just kind of a, um, a mistake there on the census's part. Because if he's working 52 weeks out of the year, it should have something. But, um, and then other income, and it says no. So that's kind of what you can expect on the censuses. Again, the 1940 is fantastic. And I'm super excited for the 1950. But the 1940 gives you a lot of information and not all the other censuses necessarily will. So now that we got to 1940, we get to move back 10 years. So we're going to go back to Ancestry's homepage by clicking on that logo up here. Go back down to censuses and we're going to find the 1930. So again, we're just going to type in that basic information, his name, Oop. his birth year, 1876, that he lived in Dade County, Missouri. And we're going to hit search. 
So again, the first one that pops up here is William C. Taylor, um, spouse Clara Taylor, living in Dadeville, Dade County, Missouri, born about 1877. Now that's one year off from our 1876, but like I said, it's um, give or take a few years usually on the census. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that record. And I can look at it and I can kind of base off of my previous information from the 1940 census if I think this is the same person. So, right name, he's born within a year of the other one. Um, he's 53, which he was, I believe he was 63 in the last one, so that matches up. Um, he's living in Dadeville. This one actually gives his street address, which is, they say street address, but it's really just the road they're living on. But still, if um, you can usually find old maps or the road might still be on a map today and you can, that can help you to narrow down where your ancestor actually lived. Um, as the ward of the city, whether they owned or rented their home, all that stuff, like I showed you on the last one. Um, but it still shows him being a barber and owning a shop. So it's pretty sure thing that this is the same guy. And you also have Teresa Bennett down here. Um, which is listed as a son, but we know from the last census he was a grandson. Um, and the way you can kind of work out which one's correct is um, you also have the son-in-law living with them, which is um, has the last name as the son, which tips you off that it's probably actually Frank Bennett's son. And also, he's two years old and Clara and William Clara Taylor are both in their fifties and that's it's getting exceedingly likely that unlikely that he is their child. So I won't go as into detail with the census but by looking at it, but I'll kinda quickly take you through the, the stuff it has on it. So again it's highlighted. Over here on the side is where it has the road. If you get out into uh, more rural areas, it won't usually have a road. Sometimes it'll have like a district and stuff like that. And again, it helps you narrow down on maps if you're looking for where they lived. So we have the same information. We have who's in the household. We have their names. We have, let me zoom in here so I can actually see. We have their home value. We have whether they're male or female, their race, their birthday, or age at their last birthday. And then we also have their marriage status so we can see that Frank Bennett down here is widowed which adds even more to the fact that um, Treasel is William Clare's grandson and not his son. We can see their age when they first married which is really great because this way you can kind of do the math and figure out um, what year they got married to help you find a marriage record later on. Um, their education status, where they were born. Now here it shows also where their mother and father were born. So you can see that Clara Taylor's parents were born in Kentucky and um, Illinois, or Tennessee, sorry. And then it also has code for um, just for office use. We have their occupation again and their employment and whether they're a veteran or not. So basically the same information. So again, we want to save this and what I like to do is I'll usually save the actual census sheet. I might fill out a worksheet and then I also like to write up a paragraph with all this information in it. And I kind of will make a timeline of their life with starting with all the census records and then later I fill in. So it's just like ends up being a big summary of their life. So I would add this to that summary. So quickly, we're just going to look at the other record. So again, we're going to go back to home. We're going to go down to search the census. We're going to do 1920 real quick. Let me find it. Here we go. William Claire Taylor, 1876. Dade. County, Missouri. Okay, so here, he's not the top option. We have a William E. Taylor married to a Ruth here, um, living in Center, Dade County, Missouri. 
born about 1876, but born in Kentucky. Now, if we scroll down just a little bit and we look at the one below it, we see there's another Claire Taylor, or there's a, a Claire W. Taylor instead of a W. Claire Taylor, married to a Clara living in Dade, um, born about 1875. So the wrong birth year, but they have the right initials and the right name. So we're going to click on him here. And yep, it shows him owning a barbershop. Um, it shows a daughter living in their house. And it shows his age is 45. So this is all lining up with the previous census data. I'll just show you real quick what this 1920 census looks like. Okay, so we have, again, just kind of the same basic information. We have their age, race, um, marital status, all that stuff. Their birthplace, if they speak anything other than English, it'll be over here. Um, birthplace of mother and father, their occupation, all that. So there's the 1920. Oh, sorry. Keep. Okay, now I'm not going to go through every single census year just because um, it could take a very lengthy amount of time to kind of do something like that. Um, but now you kind of got a rough idea of how to search through the census and everything and how to look at those records, know what you're looking at, and hopefully be ready for when the 1950 census is released and indexed. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope you guys learned something. I hope I was I refreshed you on census records if you maybe already knew about them. And if you have any more questions about Ancestry and stuff, I also have a tutorial on our YouTube page for using Ancestry Library Edition. So make sure to check that out. Thanks, guys.